we're making a drag and drop. It will have two drop zones and five draggable elements. Three elements go in the first drop zone here and two elements go in the second drop zone here. If you get the exercise right, you are shown this green check mark and can click the next button to continue. If not, you will get a red X and the option of viewing the solution. My goal here is to keep the design as clean as possible, leaving plenty of white space around the elements so that the user doesn't feel overwhelmed by too much information on the screen. And I want to still have room for all my elements, of course, all my instructions, all my context, all my navigation elements, and the feedback markers. For the layout, I will use two thirds of the page for the drop zones, and the remaining third will have a box to pick up the draggable elements from, instructions and some context. I'm leaving some space at the top for any additional text or instructions and some mandatory space at the bottom for navigation elements. For the drop zones, I'm increasing the transparency of the fill color and adding a dashed white border. This will help visually indicate where the user should drop the elements. I like to think that this helps align my exercises with the common design standards for drag and drop exercises, like when you search for an icon that best represents the drag and drop exercise and most of them have a solid draggable element and drop zones with a dashed line as a border. This dashed line really sells it, it's a sign that it's a blank space that you need to fill. For this section where my draggable elements will appear, I am using a darker color than the background. I want to make it stand out as a separate zone from the others and draw the user's attention. Then I'm going to add a rectangle here and approximate just how big I want my drag elements to be. I'm measuring them against the drop zones for this because I want the draggable elements to be as wide as the drop zone. And I also want to see if all my draggable elements can fit in a drop zone. I do this because personally I don't like it when drop zones overflow with too many elements. It can cause items to go off screen, which might in turn confuse the user if they can't see all the drag options. This is not wrong by any chance, it's just something that I like to avoid because it makes the experience nicer. Once I've done all the measuring, I'll change the color of the shape to white and create the drop correct and drop incorrect states. When creating the states, I always duplicate the normal state first because duplicating a state like drop incorrect to create drop correct can sometimes cause issues. For example, I've encountered cases where changes to text apply to some states but not others if they weren't copied from the normal state directly. For the design of the states, I'll change the shape's color to light green for the drop correct state and to light red for the drop incorrect state. I'm using lighter colors to ensure that the black text remains readable on both states because I don't want to change the black text. Next up, I will add the text and duplicate the shape five times, modifying the text for each draggable object. While you could create five separate shapes from the start and use the format painter to apply the correct and incorrect states, I find it easier to just create one template shape and then duplicate it to create the other draggable elements. I also added labels to the drop zones and a paragraph of context for the entire exercise. Once my layout is complete, I can go to the insert tab and convert my slide to a freeform drag and drop exercise. Once I click OK, this will open up the form view for my slide here and I can use this view to assign each draggable element to the drop zone it should go to. This also creates a correct and incorrect layer, but I don't like the default layers. So uh, with the layer selected, I'm just gonna right click the slide here and apply this blank feedback layer. And I'm also gonna do the same for the other layer. Once I've moved these default elements off the slide, I will have a blank feedback layer. I'm moving these elements to the pasteboard rather than deleting them because if I delete them from here or from the master slide, they will just show up anyway. Yeah, you can't actually remove them entirely. So I just push them to the side. Next up, I will go to the question design tools on the ribbon to adjust the drag and drop options. I will check the box to allow the answers to only be dropped in the drop zones. Then I will set the 
options to tile the answers so that the draggable elements stack vertically. And I'll also make sure that this box is unchecked and I will check this box so that the correct and incorrect drag states only appear after clicking the submit button. Next, I will go to each feedback layer and delete the default triggers. Then I'll head to the layer properties and make sure this option is unchecked. This is really important because I will be adding several other layers and I don't want that option interfering with their functionality. I'll also add visual indicators to show whether the user got the exercise correct or incorrect. Now it's time to set up the navigation and I'm going to place the navigation elements on separate layers. I'll create one layer for the back button, one for the next button and another layer for the submit button. For the back button, I will set triggers to display it when the base slide timeline starts and also show it on both the correct and incorrect feedback layers. I only want my user to be able to go to the previous slide. For the next button, I won't display it when the base slide uh, timeline starts because the user needs to actually complete the exercise before moving forward. After the submit button is clicked, the next button will appear on the correct and incorrect layers. For the submit button, I will show it when the timeline starts on the base slide, but hide it once the user reaches the correct and incorrect layers because, of course, we already submitted the exercise, we don't need it anymore. This setup creates a smooth user experience and it also makes things easier for me as a developer when I'm debugging. Separating navigation into layers allows me to keep things organized and call each layer every time I need it. Of course, this isn't the only way to do it, but it's my preferred method for now. One crucial thing though for this system to work is that in each layer's properties, make sure that the hide other slide layers option is not checked. If this option is enabled, it can really disrupt the functionality of the entire layer system. It's looking good so far, but I want to add one final component on the failure layer. I'm going to add a button that shows the correct solution. Even though the answers are color coded, it's sometimes necessary to explicitly show the solution, especially if you have a more complex exercise. I will create a new layer with a solid background and arrange the options into the correct categories. I will also include an extra visual indicator that clearly signals that, hey, this is the solution. On this layer, I will also display the next and back buttons, and I'll also make sure to check the layer properties and ensure that the hide other slide layers option is unchecked. After completing everything, I decided to add a bit more white space to the layout. I stacked all the draggable elements on top of each other and added a clear instruction for what the user needs to do. If you want to adjust the order in which the draggable elements appear, you can easily do this by changing the order in the timeline. Just make sure that your draggable elements are positioned above other items such as drop zones, buttons or text. I also chose to move the check mark on the correct layer here since getting the exercise right means all the draggable elements are gone and there's no risk of it obstructing other elements so it's a safe spot to place it in. And that's it, that's the finished drag and drop exercise. It all works as intended. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.